This is the VoiceOver Gurus Podcast. Real talk about the voiceover industry with your hosts, Linda Bruno and J.J. Wilson. J.J., J.J., are you there? Oh, great. The sound of a toilet flushing. Fantastic. Oh, thank you. Well, you know, (laughs) get to be my age. It's every 18 minutes. (laughs) (laughs) Welcome back. This is the VoiceOver Gurus podcast. Hello, JJ. I see you today. I see you too today. Yeah. What does that sweatshirt say? Chevy? Chevy. I I don't know. It was at Walmart. I liked it. (laughs) I drive a Ram. So, and I love Fords and I like uh, Subaru and yeah. So yeah, I just, it's warm. You like all, you like all cars. Oh, I do. I'm a car nut. That's awesome. I'm a car. My very first car, I don't know if I've ever told you this story. I I was at my 16th birthday and I had a band in high school and we traveled all over the place and playing gigs. And my father said, I got a present for you. And I went, oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. So he put his hands over my eyes, brought me to the front door, opened the door, and he said, open your eyes. And I opened my eyes. And in the driveway was a 1965, 26-foot-long Pontiac Bonneville hearse that was gray. <laughs> a hearse? A, a hearse. <laughs> a Pontiac hearse. And I turned around, looked at my dad, and I said, where is it? <laughs> and he said, that's it. And I went, oh, what a dead it? guy car. I love it. And he was serious? He was serious, yeah. So this, it it this had is a what... lot of room in the back so we could fit drum sets and amplifiers <laughs> and fit a whole bunch of people. So it and had a purpose. It had a it purpose. Did. And we okay. painted it midnight blue, put headers on it, and Krager mags. And to this day, 40 years later, people are still going, do you have the hearse? <laughs> I mean, people would go out between classes and get high and throw up in my car. And, you know, and when I tried to skip class, the cop pulled me over one day. He said, you're an idiot. You're driving a blue hearse. I know you're supposed to be in school. That's an attention anyway, grabber. That's, that was my first car. Yeah. You know, my first car was a British Racing Green uh, MGB. Oh, okay. Yeah, that okay. My, my father gave me. Um, Love and that it, car. 1977 MGB, so a little classic, but it had holes in the floorboards. Oh, my friend Andy had a spit. We both bought spit. My father bought me a new Spitfire, and he had an old one, and you could see the road in right. his car. Yeah, yeah. I used to call it my Fred Flintstone car. Yeah. <laughs> Motor ever gave out, just put your feet down. That's all. Yeah, and the, the AC unit was right, like pointed at your crotch, called it the crotch cooler. <laughs> And living in Miami at the time where it's so, it's like, you know, the humidity and the yeah. heat. And I would be sweating driving to high school yeah. in my little crotch cooler. <laughs> gotcha. Wow. But I loved that car. I loved yeah. that car. It yeah. was so cool. Mm. So excellent. So welcome back, everyone. Welcome and- back to the VoiceOver Gurus podcast number 912. <laughs> and if you were lucky enough, I don't know if it's lucky is the word, to see us on uh, YouTube, then welcome or maybe you're a new viewer, listener to our or podcast. Maybe I scared you off. <laughs> you never know. You never know. <laughs> so let's talk. What's going on with you? Oh, I was just, uh, just. Uh, what am I working on now? I'm working on a, uh, it's the coolest thing. It's an apple-shaped cutting board. Oh, very nice. It's very cool. I drew it out last night, cut it out of maple. Mm-hmm. And now I'm going to actually make little holes in the center and put some black... Uh, uh, glue in so that they look like seeds. Oh, and I'm going to cool. put it on a Lazy Susan. Mm-hmm. And so it'll spin and it's going to have a red edge. And it's, it's, it's coming out very nicely. Sounds lovely. Yeah. And I've just been busy as anything today, just recording a show about killing fish. And then I have to do some, uh, thank you for calling. Uh, we're not here right now, so. Did you say killing fish? Yes. It sounds well, like you said a name. Them. Of Colleen Fish. Oh, no, Colleen Fish. Oh, I went to high school with her. Yeah, she was a great lady. I've had recently, the last week, just such a drag with projects that can't seem to get wrapped up. Oh, one of those, yeah. Picky, like really super picky clients. It's happened now on three projects, one of which involves one of my students. So the poor thing has to drive here from Queens. 
um, to do the fixes. Something that started Uh-oh. November 30th, a project that you originally were involved in. Yeah. We had to do Monday night more pickups for it because the client was so picky. And then I have another one from a client in England. The, you know, the client is just... Don't I don't I don't like I did the whole thing. Okay, just redo one scene. So I'm like, okay, great, one scene. Then they couldn't they didn't like you don't want to be too enthusiastic, but you want to still be engaging because it's for medical. Right. So okay, I send a bunch of samples off. Oh, we love the first sample. Now can you reread the whole thing in that voice? <laughs> so like, oh, great. I love it when they do that. <laughs> I have to do the whole thing again. Which fine, you know. But, of course, it's all timed. Each scene is timed. Right. So I have to get the timings. And I have to keep referencing this type of read that right. the client wants. Because in my mind, I thought the other way. Anyway, you know how it goes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, just, I do indeed. I just and want spe- to wrap things up. Speaking of clients and, and things like that, it's it's hard enough to... You know, to get things done with clients, you know, because they keep coming back or whatever. Or, Mm -hmm. you know, I have been known to make a mistake or two. I, you know, have done that. And Not you. Oh, yeah. I mean, oh, yeah. (laughs) Yeah. A wed. A wed. But if you, you know, when... When you're dealing with a client and you send them an email and go, uh, you know, after they, they contact you and say, can you do this gig? And I say, sure. What do you have in the budget? You know, what are we charging? Where's it going to run? Right. And then they the send you an email back and say, so are we all set? And I'm going, did you not read my last email? <laughs> it, it was asking a bunch of questions on what exactly it is we're going to do so we can work out a rate together. Oh, no, I didn't see that. I'll get back to you. And then two days goes by, and it's just, oh, my God, <laughs> read the freaking email, yes. you know? And if it's something urgent on my end or your end, am I allowed to say that on? I guess urgent? so. Anyway, yes. <laughs> you said crotch cooler, so I can do whatever the hell I want. <laughs> yes, but... fact, I may go get one. They have it on Amazon. <laughs> I don't know if you knew that. Responsiveness uh, is important. It is so important, and I think that's why the people who are working a lot work a lot because they know they when they send the script, you know, some guys I know in this business go, yeah, I'll have it back to you on Friday before noon. Right. Well, Which what the not... hell are you doing between now yeah. and then? Mm-hmm. Are you that busy? Right. No. I like... to, that's what I, you know, I got this session sent to me at about 1.38, and you and I were scheduled for 2.00. To do this, so I asked you for an extra ten minutes, and I got it done, edited and sent for the man to start working on. That's nice. I didn't want to make him wait an hour and then another half an hour. Right. Mm-hmm. And that's he loves that about me. He goes, "Damn, that's great! I can get it over with," because they're waiting to get through it too. So I, yeah, the one that I have to redo today, you know, they're overseas, so they're six hours ahead of me. Oh, great. So, you know, and she asked, she goes, is there any chance you can get it back to us by end of day tomorrow for them, which would be the morning for me. Right. Tomorrow. So, of course, I say yes. You know, what am I going to yep. do? Say, yep. no, are you kidding me? No. I had to, even yours. though I have to teach six people tonight. Uh, you right. Know, but, um, <laughs> so I like to do the classic of, uh, what is it, uh, under promise and over deliver. So I say, yep, I, I can get it back to you probably by end of day, definitely to end of day for you tomorrow, but I'm going to do it today. Yeah. So, <laughs> you yeah. know, yeah. this way I send it and it's like, oh my God, thanks for getting it back to me so quickly. That's a little trick, guys, you know. Oh, absolutely. Under and sometimes and they will actually, sometimes they send a file at quarter to five on a Friday afternoon and don't say if they need it for the weekend. Mm-hmm. So I always go, well, should I do this Monday morning? But I can't, my brain just won't let me do that. I always feel it out. Because I spend all weekend worrying about it and going, well, I got to do this Monday. I just do it and get it done. You do it. I feel them out and I just say, when you need it back by. Right. And then then I do that. Well, that requires 19 more emails. That's the problem. (laughs) So do you think you can have it to me Monday? I just told you I was getting it to you now. (laughs) Depends on the client. Depends on the client. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. But yes, yes. But there are levels of frustration. It's just <laughs> important me. to be responsive um, because, you know, there could be a time change issue. They could be in California. You're in New York. You know, whatever it right. is, you right. need to live your life on their time frame yes. um, to make yourself professional and yep. to make yourself different because there's just too many of us out there I trying know. to get the jobs. I know. You know? Speaking of, uh, of uh, SEALs. 
Um, <laughs> seals. Oh, no, we weren't talking about seals. I was thinking about seals. That's why I was thinking about Yeah. So um, now you said one of our students had a question about agents. Is yes, that what you said was to Melinda, asking Bruno? David. That's David. All I'll say. David. I David. Won't give your last name, David. Um, was asking the question about. Brought to our... you by Coca Cola. <laughs> and David. Um, and David. He wanted to know what our opinion was on the agent situation. Did you just say our opinion? Our opinion. You're not All right, let's take that again, Linda, this time more slowly, but make it sound faster. (laughs) (laughs) Our opinion on agents and the pros and if we have any cons. The pro agents? (laughs) No, the pros about having an agent or the cons. And he also wanted to know Well, some agents are cons. (laughs) He also wanted to know, well... So be careful of them. That's my opinion. Well, I have some stories, but I'm not going to tell them now. Me um, too. Yeah. <laughs> so a year, a year it took to get, to get money. Yeah. 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 A year. Yeah. You know what I find back on that little topic? I find that some of the biggest clients sometimes take the longest to pay. Yeah. yeah it's amazing. Thinking, like, really? You're Sony. You know, it took Sony a year to pay me once. Yeah, and and I was like, really? You're you're Sony? How could you? <laughs> and it, it was like five hundred bucks. It wasn't even anything like huge. Yep, I don't but know. That's a different topic. But so... agents, yes, <laughs> agents. because I feel that that's that's where you you know get the the bigger auditions than the pay to plays, the voice one two threes, voiceover dot com, and blah, 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 blah. Um, yes. Um, it's hard to get an agent, especially in New York, Chicago, or L.A., if you don't live there. Yeah. You live in New York, so you get to have a New York agent. But, you know, well, their mentality is still a little localized because they have so much talent in the area that right. they don't need to represent people outside of the market. Right. They don't right. have to. You know, right. so for them, they'll represent you if, you know, maybe you're a bigwig or, you know, you're a celebrity or, you know, whatever you decided to move but that's why New York, L.A., Chicago are like that. But I think for every voice talent, you know, I don't think you need to have an agent, but I think it's an awesome goal and right. something that you should strive for. Because like J.J., like you're saying, that's where really the qual- really quality jobs come through. Yeah, and the, Plus yeah, your agent the fights for you and your agent watches usage. Your agent gets... If it needs to be renewed, they're the one that's like checking on it. They're the ones that that's doing the homework for you. They work exactly. their butts off. Exactly. Um, and they're the ones that maintain those relationships with the you know clients um, to be able to give them their talent. You know, they create that. We've talked about this in the past that an yes. agent will figure out, OK, I need it's a fishing show. JJ would be good for it. Let me also get this guy Don. Da, 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 da. And we'll submit in a nice little package a beautiful set of auditions right. to a but a, but a good quality client is going to use an agent too. <laughs> exactly right. Exactly right. You know, so you're going to get some higher higher quality jobs. Yeah. Now getting them, I find they uh, there was one day I was sending a demo out to a new agent. I don't know where it was. But I contacted them a few days later, and he said, you know, I got over 100 demos this week. Hmm. He said, it's going to be a while before I get to yours. Wow, the fact they replied. Yeah, at at least that, yes. Mm -hmm. But I find the best way to to get these, I don't know, they're not, I call them middle agents because they're, not doing the the million dollar stuff, but they got some really excellent stuff going on. And yeah, they've got some great clients. They, mm-hmm. they do the smaller market stuff as well. The best way is to get good enough so that you and I can maybe say, you know what? Hey, let me let me send your demo to this agent. Mm-hmm. Introduce That's how you. I've gotten most of my agents. You and I have done that many times in yeah. the past, and it's it's just an in if you've you know if you're already there. And you recommend me, and they like my demo, then I'm going to probably get in unless they have somebody who sounds exactly like me, which I've never heard. Right, right. Uh, I think the only time I've ever actively sought out an agent, well, there were two times. The first time was before I moved to New York. Right. And I got crazy. I told you this, where I got crazy, and I did these mailers, these insanely creative mailers, which I wound up getting three interviews out of the five that I sent. Yep. 
Um, but after I was in New York, one of my agents went out of business. So it was like, okay, oh. now what? So I had to start, you know, farming myself out there to try and find another agent. And that was about me getting my demo together, getting quality stuff, finding the person to send it to. And here in New York, anyway, I don't know if it's like that now, you had to confirm um, that they were accepting demos. Because right. when they're not accepting, don't you dare send something. Because oh, then no, you no, wind no, up no. on this blacklist, yeah. you know? So... I don't know if they're still like that because I haven't looked for an agent in New York in a while, but yeah. it was that kind of thing. You had to it's do your research. It's not an easy thing, and you have to be really ready and really good. Yeah, you do. You, you, you really do. have had to do many sessions with clients on the phone um, to get the feel for that because that's a, a world unto itself. <laughs> it really. Yeah. Some of them are just the easiest, nicest, easygoing people. Hey, let's do this. We loved your audition. Uh, you know, half an hour later, you've done four spots. They all clap when you get done, and you just go, fantastic. That was that was a really cool session. Mm -hmm. And then there are the ones like, you know, you went to a New York where the guy <laughs> said, I'm the one who didn't want you. And Why, then where do you, you go from there? Where do you go? And I know you. You probably just went, you know, one of these. Oh, God, we're on camera. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Um, and nice. I said it, to him, thank God you're not the one. Did it the best you possibly could anyway. Yeah, I said, thank God yeah. the other seven wanted me or six wanted yeah. me. But yeah. I now had to go into the booth in front of all of them. And right. do and I just you, you block it out and just yep. say no. Nope. You just have to say you know. I what? got chosen. I'm gonna prove you wrong, Mister. Exactly. Now I know. I mean, it sounds simplified to sit there and say you just have to be really good. I know. I like to stretch like this. Uh. Um, simplified to say that you just have to be really good, but that's just the bottom line. You need to be good. Yes. Um, and then there's going to be times though where an agent will not represent you because they already have, like you just touched on, someone that sounds similar to you. Yes. You know. Yes. Or they'll do something called shelving, which happened to me. Right. So you can't. <laughs> where they have someone that sounds like you, but you don't know that. So you're like, oh, my God, I'm getting with this huge agency. And the agent's like, yeah, I'm going to send you out, send you out. And I'm talking, this agency is huge. And they're still huge. I'm not even going to say who they are. But six months go by. Uh, just and I whisper haven't it. Nobody will hear. <laughs> six months go by, <laughs> and I haven't gotten one audition. And then I, I realized I was shelved because they had someone else, and they didn't want me to be competing against them. So they pulled me out of the market. Which nice. is a nasty thing to do. That that really and is. And it nasty. happens. It yeah. happens with the big sometimes with the big agencies. Yeah. So um, yes, you got to have quality goods, but you don't need an agent. No, you can do the pay to plays and uh, just send to local agencies and production managers and things like that. You can but do a marketing you, program. Once you find that you're booking and you're booking regularly and you're starting to build a client base, right. then go for it. You know, contact agents and see, are you accepting? Make sure they're accepting demos. Can I right. submit? Can I send something over? And, right. and $100 then, bill, you know, something, <laughs> anything. <laughs> also, <laughs> at that point, too, hopefully you would have made some comrades in the business and if one of them has an agent, you can ask their opinion. What do you think right. of working with XYZ? You know, right. do you think? And then you'll get, you know, well, I like this agent. I don't like that one. But I'm in the same situation with you, JJ. All of my agents past the one that I had to search for back then were from referrals. Yep. So, yep. or and they I bet came you that to me. The agents do check out if somebody, like if you refer me, and I write them a letter and send them a demo and they play it and they like it. I bet sometimes they call you and go, what are you, is this guy really good? Mm -hmm. Or is this uh, one of those demos that was done for $29,342.86 in right. four weeks? And is he going to be able to live up to it? Yeah. Because they they, it, it all goes back to the email thing again and, you know, the texting and all this stuff. They don't have time. Mm -hmm. They're getting right. 100 demos a week over yours. So make sure that you, you've got to do everything right. You can't make a mistake and you can't miss. Mm -hmm. As we've talked about that before, too. You just, you just can't miss. And I know, and I'm sure you're the same way, JJ, you would need to... I'm not... It's our reputation on the line <laughs> if we recommend you to an agent. So right. <laughs> we, we need to really believe in you. <laughs> you know what I like to do when you recommend me to an agent? Is I like to call him and say, hi, my name is J.J. Wilson, and I've been doing voiceovers, well, since 1967. 
And then you get a call and go, what the hell are you doing? this person? <laughs> or you have the situation, you introduced me to an agent in the Midwest, and the agent was very frank. She just told me, she goes, I have too many Her people. name was Frank? Her, <laughs> she was very frank. The agent told me, wow. she said, I have too many girls that sound like you, and I'd rather give work to my local ladies. Okay. I can okay. appreciate that. I, I give a lot that. of work to the local ladies here. Do you? In Boy. what way? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, it's cutting out a little bit. What? <laughs> so there are different scenarios. So uh, he wanted to know, too, are there any cons to having an agent? Yes, there are agents who are cons who will... Uh, I, As a matter of fact, I had one here that I, I was going to maybe get back into a little bit of on camera. I used to do a lot of on camera stuff as well. And so I called this agent locally here in Nashville and uh, she said, yes, but I need you to take my one-day seminar first before I decide. Oh. And I went, I just sent you my resume. It's got like eight movies, 40 commercials, and 35 years of voiceovers on it. So you have to take her a seminar? Uh, yeah, it was $150. Oh, okay. So I said, all right. She's the only one in town, really, that's any worth anything. So I went there, and I just sat in there and looked at her while she told me stuff that I could have told her and half of it was wrong. And then we spent an hour on headshots. She said, now, look at this headshot and look at this headshot. Which one would you rather look at? I said, I don't look at them. The casting directors do. Mm -hmm. It's up to the photographer I picked to get me the right picture. Right. So why are we talking about this? Oh, wow. And after all that and all that time, she didn't have nothing. Really? She said, it's a $50 job. It's all day. You'll be in the back corner. <laughs> And I'm going, no, 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 no. I'm only going for speaking parts. And I'm experienced. And and then, and here's the texting bit again. She started texting me and I was texting her, you know, like, is there anything going on? I haven't heard from you. And she did one of those recorded texts where you push a button and it records. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The voice. Mm -hmm. She didn't know it. Oh, it no. And it by accident. She said, this guy is such an a-hole. I wish oh. he would stop bothering me. So I called her up and I said, you really need to be careful about what you send on voice. And she went, what? Oh, God. And I told her what she did and I said, "Bye bye <laughs> Oh, God. So be very careful. Wow. And that's also another good point. When you're writing an email, be careful. <laughs> People take emails 65 different ways. Mm -hmm. Always, you know, oh, you know, I do like 72 LOLs in mine, no matter what I'm saying. <laughs> I'm so sorry your mother died, LOL. You know. Um, You're covering but, all your bases. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Keep them friendly. Keep them easy. Don't ever threaten, you know, for payment or anything else. Hey, just check in. I really suck at QuickBooks. You may have paid me a year ago, or you may not have. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I'm on medication. Uh, could you check, <laughs> LOL, my wife needs new shoes. That's the way I go after money sometimes. Yes. You can't just say, you know what, God damn it, it's been a year and you haven't paid me. You're very diplomatic. I did, I did that once and I never worked for them again. <laughs> <laughs> That's the result. Yeah, That's it is. the result. Yeah, so. uh, a con I was thinking of, maybe some people don't view it as a con, but some agents will require exclusivity. And yes. Some agents want a cut of everything you do. Yep. So you have to weigh that based on what types of jobs this agent could potentially or what relationships this agent could build for you to make sure it outweighs, you know, the fact right. of you working on your own because some of them want that. Right. But I don't think I could make that switch to to all my little clients that I have that, that keep my house lit up and oh, uh, paid for. It's you way know, they're too not late gonna for us. Go an extra 20%. No, it's, <laughs> way, it's way too late for us. <coughs> Please. You know, plus I like to have more control over my casting and what, yes. what I audition yes. for and what, you know, I get put up for. But yeah. But otherwise, if you can get an agent and you can get a good agent, then it's a wonderful badge in the road of voiceover your voiceover badge journey in the road of voiceover yes Ta -da. you should be very proud of yourself i'm going to embroider that on my pillow <laughs> if you were able to in impress the badge an agent of the embroider of my pillow <laughs> you embroider too you could do it i do i do embroider mm -hmm. i know so am i very talented well thank you and thank not you just much. voiceover <laughs> so, so um um 
There was something else I wanted to say to you, but I forget what it was. Okay, so he also asked, too. Yes. Any pointers on how to land an agent? Yes, first you get on a plane, <laughs> and then you land on the runway and go see your agent. What do That's you not what he meant, is it? <laughs> no. No. Well, we just talked about that. The best yeah. way to do that is to, you know, uh, try it the, the old-fashioned way and market yourself or get really, 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 really good. And I think that hanging out with other voiceover people is the best way. Mm-hmm. You know, because, you know, we know a lot of people from our past who are still in the business. And we do that with all of them. And, I've, you know, I've got like seven or eight agents out of just trading. I, right. I think it's agent trading is what I call it. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Hey, I'll, uh, I'll give you this for that. Okay. All right. Yeah. Right. So make your connections, make your friends, work hard, you know, right. start to build up a client base. And also start to figure out, too, um, what you're good at. You know, what, right. are you, what, what are you booking jobs doing? That's the indication. Yeah. Yeah. And make you know. sure you've got some phone experience. Phone? Because it's phone being, or not, you know, Skype or a coaching experience while doing the session with many oh, people on right. the other line. Yes. You've got to have done that many times before right. you get an agent and dive into it the first time. Right. Um, that that it's, is it's definitely a whole new world. something that has to just continually be practiced. Yes. Because you can't, like, learn it. It's like you have to be thrown into the fire and you have right. to make your mistakes and you have to have people yell at you and you have to have yep. people be unhappy for you to learn those lessons. I'm having that with one of my students who booked this job, the one that's going on forever. And the poor thing, because she doesn't have a studio yet, she's still starting out, barely even starting out. I had to coach her for like almost two hours. To really oh. get certain reads out of her because she's not used to that. So right. being coached on the job is a whole different yeah. animal. And you don't want it to take two hours. Right. They, they want you in and out of there because they got stuff to do. And she like feels so about. bad. I'm telling you, don't feel bad. You're, you've never done You're this new. before. Yeah. Right. And I believed in you, so I put you up in front of my client, and they love your voice. Yeah, right. But, you know, you could see she was getting frustrated. I was like, don't get frustrated. This is re- repetition. I told her also she got she has, she has to join us for the workouts. Um, I said, you need to continually get critiqued, continually get coached. That's yes. why workouts are great yep. um, because you're, you're yes, being exactly. put on the well, that's, spot. That's a good point. Mm-hmm. We do exactly what the clients will do to them when they're in a session. Right. No, no, no. Do it again. Let's hit this word. Let's have. Let's be brighter. Uh, it's, that's a very good point. Uh, taking, what, you know, our workouts is just like practicing a session with people on the phone. Right. So therefore, I, everybody who's listening to this should take our Wednesday night workouts. Well, and I you t- know when they are? Wednesday, Wednesday nights. nights. Well, I'm going to have to do them. We're going to have to do them more frequently. I mean, right now we're, we're doing them very frequently and they're selling out. They're selling yeah. out like the week before. Yeah. So, um, but that's a good nice. point, Yay. though. We can really get people ready to be able to handle that environment, because yes. it is different than just sitting here and reading a nine-minute script to yourself, editing it together, and sending it off. No, you need There's the live nobody feedback. down your throat. Yeah, you and need they're not the pressure. watching the clock. Exactly, you need, you the, need pressure. the pressure. Yeah. yeah, and we 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 adjust it in the workouts. If you've come to a lot of workouts, we're going to be tougher on you. Um, exactly. The better you get. I told that to one of our students the other night. She, she said, wow, you're being tough today. And I went, well, I'm, I'm to the point with you where you don't need the broad spectrum of BS that we've been throwing at you to learn the craft. You've learned it now. We're now I'm just going to act like, not the BS, but I, I said, I'm going to act like a, a producer now. Yeah. Now it's time to get tough. I want little things mm-hmm. that I'm hearing in my head. And all you have to do is say, yes, I mm-hmm. can do that. That's all I want to hear from you. Right. That's Don't it. complain. Mm-hmm. Right. <laughs> because, and I said, this is a good thing that you are to that point now. And it's Because now I don't have to go, oh my God, it was 47. We mm-hmm. need it in 30. You know, they have a, a, an idea of time and what's going on in the script. And that way you can just tweak it. Right. Or I can, or you can, or what have you. I just got an idea while we were talking. Maybe we should run a workout that is separate from the other workouts. Yes. That are auditions. That we're casting, acting yes, as if we're casting. Yes, I was just thinking the same thing. Great We minds. should do an audition and have, maybe we should try that last week. <laughs> I never <laughs> know when past. these are going to air. <laughs> but tonight, last week, 
two weeks ago. <laughs> Maybe we should do that tonight. Give everybody a script and have them all read the same thing. And then we pick somebody and then we can watch all the other six get hurt. <laughs> Five. Because <laughs> five, the other five. Because they, they need to feel that. The pain. The pain. I'm yeah. sorry. If you were taller, we would have given you the voiceover. Well, what? I, th- I think that, <laughs> yeah, I would like to promote it as a separate thing because I don't want people going into it. I want you to come into it because you want the challenge. Right. You know, and I want you to be okay with getting critiqued more you know, in a, in a more difficult situation, as opposed to someone who's just starting out. I don't. We're, you That's know, we're not... true. Yeah, we don't want somebody who's never read a script before auditioning right. for something. We're not. That was do completely this. terrible. And <laughs> right. thanks for showing up. <laughs> but maybe I'll call it. We're removing the gloves. We're taking the gloves off. <laughs> yeah, fisticuffs. <laughs> cuffs. I like that. You know what? I think we'll do it for next month. That's a good idea. Yeah. Or audition uh, night with the gurus. Yeah, we'll do it in March. Yeah. We'll do it in March. I think okay. that'll be great. Oh. I'll wear my leather jacket. It's going to be awesome. <laughs> Your leather jacket? And my chaps. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Oh, speaking of chapstick, um, our dogs got into bed the other night, and uh, we have two dachshunds, and their breath is kind of like ass most of the time. <laughs> Because they lick their ass. <laughs> well, no, no. Well, yeah, and it's a long way away. That's what I don't know how they get there. Well, wiener dogs. They had their notorious for bad breath. But they both got in bed the other night, and they came up and licked me, and, and, and one licked Janine, and they they smelled fresh. And it was like, what in the hell is going Uh-oh. on? Then I rolled over, and it was on top of a chapstick that had been eaten. <laughs> And I believe it was ivory licorice vanilla plum or oh, something. Very nice. So they both smelled delicious and boy were their lips soft. It was amazing. It was amazing. Yeah. Well, on that note, I think on we that can note, wrap up this, this, this episode. Blah. Of the VoiceOver Gurus podcast, join us for a workout. If you have any questions or topics that you'd like to share with us, ask us. somebody else. Oh, no. No. Info at voiceover.guru. Guru. 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 G-A. Now G-U-R-U. Are you what? Are you ready to end the podcast? Yes, I are. I are. I am. Everyone, thanks for joining us. Thank you, AJ, as usual. Thank you for joining us. I'll Linda. see you at a workout. I'll see you at a workout. S- I'll see you at a workout last <laughs> week. <laughs> Have a great day. Thank you, bye.